Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, all the time we have type of like that. I was thinking that Jean-Claude was much be better introducer than myself and try to remember one Jean what Jean-Claude was saying before the start of the lecture. And, and she was always trying to think funny way. And she was saying that <coughs> we met together in 1958 in Paris. And she's French and we lived for six years in Paris. And uh, we immigrated to United States in 1964. Jean-Claude said, no, no, we don't immigrate to United States, you immigrated to New York City. <laughs> and actually, for three years we were illegal aliens. <laughs> <laughs> and and, uh, and uh, of course, uh, uh, I will show you color slides, and actually you will see that the, my studio is the building we lived since there, since 1964, for 49 years, in the same building, same place, downtown Manhattan. Now, I will go to show you the color slides in very dark, and I will not read. There will be these 80 images, I will run quite fast, and after I do come here, to answer many questions. And I will answer many questions, but I will not answer questions about politics, religion, and not about other artists. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Now let me go down. I using this old fashioned color slice projector because I love 35 millimeter color slides. <laughs> now we can put all the lights down. Okay, now in 1991, we were finishing the project, the umbrellas, joint project for Japan in the United States. There was 1,340 blue umbrellas in Japan and 1,760 umbrella and Southern California and Los, Los Angeles and Kern County. Each umbrella was 20 feet tall, 29 feet diameter. The length of the project in Japan was 12 miles long around Sato River, and actually 90 umbrellas were standing in Sato River. And the length of the project in California was 19 miles long, about two and a half miles wide. And this is, okay. Uh, this is the, basically the project was in, yeah, and uh, Los Angeles County and Kern County around the Interstate 5, this major Interstate 5, that we succeeded to convince Highway Department of California to install about 30 umbrellas between the north and south uh, uh, way of the Interstate 5. Now, many years, <coughs> uh, uh, and many years before we have the idea of the, um, uh, the, the umbrellas, uh, we have also another project called the wrapping of the rice stack. We started in 1971. But when the umbrella was finishing, we have already idea about the new project. Now, this is a very early sketches about over the river. Even the title is wrong. You see, there was not decided to be on Colorado. There was a simply proposition to suspend horizontally fabric panel way above the water. Can you see the project from above? I grew that little person. This is about eight and a half by 11 inches drawing. And we go down to the river. You can experience the project from underneath. <coughs> And of course, uh, these two drawings, they are now in a collection at National Gallery in Washington, D.C. The National Gallery of Washington is the biggest collector of original works of museum in the United States. Now, the, <coughs> the, I was telling you, when the umbrella was standing uh, uh, in, in Japan and California, we, uh, we also have a project for the, the Berlin, the wrapping of the rice stack. And that project was uh, refused three times in 1977. 1981 and 1987. There was a great chance to start the final uh, possible chance to get permission for the rice stack during the time we were started working in the umbrellas. And th this is why during the 92 to 94, we spent 180 days in the capital of January, Bonn, uh, 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 um, presenting the project and convincing the deputy of the German parliament to let us do wrapping of the rice stack. Only during the summertime, when the German parliamentarian was on holidays, we have a time to go over the river. Jean Crotty have enough of the uh, city of Bonn, who was a small city, then the capital of Germany, and we decided that over the river project should happen in the United States. And most of the great river in the United States, they are born in the Rocky Mountains. 
This is why in the summer of 92, 93, 94, our team traveled 15,000 miles, investigating 89 rivers in the Rocky Mountains. And from these 89 rivers, we have six possible sites of the project. There were two possible rivers in the state of Idaho, section of Pyatt River and Salmon River, section of Wind River in the state of Wyoming, and two possible rivers in the state of Colorado, Cache La Poudre, north of Denver, South Arkansas River, a section of Rio Grande. We are always traveling with our friend photographer Wolfgang Voss, who take pictures, and this is really the uh, very small study again, using photography of Wolfie, and I draw with, uh, I am standing here to, to give you the scale. I draw with enamel paint and wax crayon how the project will be looked. But finally, in February of 94, we get permission for the wrapping of the rice stack. We stop to work on over the river. We concentrated all the resource, energy, and money. Finally, on June, July 1995, the rice stack was wrapped with one million square feet of this silver fabric and about uh, 10 miles of blue ropes. And for two weeks, over 5 million people came to see the rice stack. And this is the sunset, the rice stack with the, with the Brandenburg Gate there. This is all in 1995. After two weeks of exhibition of the rice stack, all the materials were removed, the fabric, the rope, and steel, and many other hardware was all recycled and returned back to New York. And of course, in 1979, we have a project for New York City called The Gates. We start to negotiate it with the city of New York and coach administration between 1979 and 81, but the city of New York say no in 1981. When we returned back for the rice stack, there was another mayor, uh, 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 and of course, that was a Dinkins, and after that was a uh, Giuliani, and Giuliani was against the project. There was no chance to do the gates, but we also have no site for over the river. This is why, in 1996, our team, team returned to the site of over the river to take all much more information, measurement from the six possible sites for over the river project. Now, you see our team here, our chief engineer, Vince Davenport, in the middle here. And we have this yellow rope because with the yellow rope, Vince prepares some kind of contraption to study many things, especially the distance from the yellow rope who actually simulate our steel cables. We need to have a different, at least 96 inches distance between the rope and the steel cable for clearance. And we need to record that many of this information of all these six rivers. For example, we have the three yellow rope uh, created the space for two fabric panels and we take a lot of records from all the river of all these uh, six sites. And finally, in late 96, we come to consensus that for aesthetical purposes, engineering purposes, all kind of other purposes, the best sites for our project will be Arkansas River, that section of Arkansas River and the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains, uh, east from Salida and west from Canyon City. I know very well, this is the area of uh, 42 miles where we're installing about six miles of fabric panels and eight different locations. How the Arkansas River look in the summertime is this is why the project will be summer because the most important part is to, one of the important part of that project is to experience the work from inside, rafting in the river. We have the Highway 50 in the south bank of the river and the north bank of the river have Union Pacific Railroad track and Jean-Claude was very excited that we have the regular track of Union Pacific because this is also visually is very beautiful, the same way very uh, important for the moving of our hardware. And, and, uh, and that uh, idea was principal reason to choose Arkansas River. Now, using the real site, I start to do preparatory study using the real landscape. This is typical collage in two parts. This, the work is much smaller, it's about 13 and a half by 26 inches, the left side, it's 13 and a half by 12 inches the right side. That collage is done with pencil, chalk, or pastel, and actually real fabric to simulate the cloth of the fabric panels. Typical interruptions for the vegetation and the rock formation, and have a real twine to simulate the cables. And this is a two part with the locating what are that area is designed. But when you go down under, you have totally different vision. Now, the fabric is specially woven, very quite heavy fabric and through the fabric and see the cloud formation and the contour of the mountains. Now the fabric panels, they are only above the water, meaning that the width of the fabric panels varied with the width of the water from 45 feet wide to sometimes 120 feet wide. 
from cable to, to cable, they are 30, uh, 40, 35 feet. And the, w the distance from the water to the fabric is minimum this uh, uh, 96 inches, but some occasions is much higher because the banks of the river is higher. And also the, the fabric panel, they are not always horizontal because the banks of the river, they are not on the same height. Now the steel cap cables go much further away hanging on the banks of the river. Now one of the biggest issue, of biggest problem to get for our project is to get the permission and basically come from the who have a right on the site of our project. Very, very right away in the beginning we understand that almost 95% of these 42 miles is in the hand and inside United States federal government and Department of Interior and Undersecretary called Bureau of Land Management who, who carry about 20% of the surface of the United States who is owned by American taxpayer. And of course, the B BLM, Department of Interior, they really rent the land. They rent the land to uh, mining company, to oil company, to ranchers, building airports, highway bridges. But before we go to Was Washington, this is all happened in the mid-90s. Before we go to Washington, we need to introduce the project to community there. You can see myself and Jean-Claude in a senior citizen center in Salida. We put on the wall photographs of other projects we realized, and we try to say who were here. Our chief engineer, Vince Davenport, is there between me and Jean-Claude. And we try to say that in 1969, we did a project in Australia called Rap Coast. Outside of Sydney, Australia, we wrapped one and a half miles of coastal line with 85 high cliffs to the sandy beach area using about 30 uh, miles of rope and and near one and a half million square feet of fabric. In 1972, we did Valley Curtain and the Western Slope and the Rocky Mountains to Colorado. Between 1972 and 76, we were working in Northern California, and finally, and the October, September of 1976, running fence was built in Sonoma and Marin County, north of California, crossing for 24 and a half miles Sonoma Marine County near the, from Highway 101 and finally disappearing in Pacific Ocean and Bodega Bay for a quarter of a mile. You see that little person start here and this is uh, the scale of the, uh, the fence. Now the, again that project was for two weeks and after two weeks of exhibition all the poles, all the fabric and steel cables were removed and industrially recycled. In 1978 we did that project in the loose part in Kansas City, Missouri, we covered this golden fabric, the walkway, two and a half miles walkway, and this late after, um, s uh, autumn days when the leaves of the trees start to match of the colors. In 1980s, we started to work in Florida, where finally in 1983, surrounded island was realized. We surrounded 11 islands with six and a half million square feet of floating pink fabric. The fabric was attached in the beach area of the islands floating 220 feet on the surface of the water, ending with the boom shapes on this uh, very busy Biscayne Bay, and it was uh, seven miles from the northern <laughs> island to the uh, um, southern islands of these 11 islands. And finally, in 1985, after 10 years working and two refusal with the French government, we wrapped the oldest bridge on Paris, the Pont Neuf, with this champagne color fabric. And in 1998, many years later, we wrapped 178 tree in the park outside of Basel, Switzerland. We have these sunny days and this have these winter days. This is called a picture. It did have a sunset. Now from, from Salida, we're going to Canyon City. And you can see our presentation in the, down up there. You see Vince Davenport, even Richard Miller is there. And all, uh, all of these official people with a tie, the federal government, local agency, the <laughs> sheriff, etc., answer the question. And finally, this all happened in the late 90s. And finally, and, and, uh, we arrived in the Washington where we were presenting the project to the, uh, the BLM director, Tim Fry. Uh, this is during the Clinton administration when the Bruce Babbitt was the Secretary of Interior. Now, all this project involved a lot of work, and this is why. For example, we, we put together, you know, because they have so many different agencies, this typical discussion with the BLM office in the Royal Gorge in Canyon City, when our team is in the left side and you see all the federal agency, highway department, 
all the different agencies on the right side that we can combine the discussion of the project simultaneously. If you know, it will take very, very long time. Even take, now we know, very, very long time to pull out that project. For the advancing the project, also we hired the services of the engineering company and Guelp uh, Canada, RWDI, is one of the greatest engineering company who do conduct the wind tunnel test and their uh, offices, their t wind tunnel there. This is the one, th one sixth in scale of fabric panels and we have the wind blowing and they're recording all the force of the fabric, uh, wind and the fabric and the hooks and the anchors and the cables, all that thing. Now, all our project, their unique image, we cannot physically decide it how, how this is the, uh, be done in the studio. I need really uh, to, uh, uh, in the studio I make the drawings, the vision, but we need to, with our engineers and every specialist, see how the project will build. This is why for all our project we build, we build life site test. This is this, and, and many, many uh, years before, in the late 90s, we did four life size tests, 300 miles west from our river, near Grand Junction, where we built the one-to-one -one scale, several fabric panels, and we can see, for example, these fabric panels have a copper and silver, only silver, actually, the color is not silver, it's aluminum and copper, aluminum, and much more extra fabric, heavy fabric, lighter fabric, and it, when you go underneath, you can see exactly how the project looks. And another picture is when you see Jean-Claude down, you see the scale of this life size test done in the late 90s. Now, I was telling you that all that work was preparing because that is part of our application to the federal government, but it was necessary also to pinpoint exactly where the project will be in these 42 miles. In early 2000, our team, a big number, travel with air, make large air photography of all the Arkansas River area. And, and we, I will show you how we succeeded to have these fabric panels. Now, this is the very close section of the work we did after investigating, pinpoint exactly when the project was situated. This is the entrance of our project from east entrance, about 10 miles west from Canyon City near Parkdale. When you see that fabric panels, they will be always rectangular but they change with the width of the water. The red uh, line is our steel cables. But when you have a curve, we need to introduce all this trapezoid fabric panel because that is how we move. Basically, we, ne we need to fabricate it near 1,000 panels, all costume made for these eight different locations of our project. All that costs a lot of money. We're not independently wealthy. The money to pay the bills to, to make this project it came from the sale of original works of art I do in my studio alone. I do not have a system. Every original work, from the very small sketch to the large drawings and large sculptures, they are done by myself alone. Now, I will show you the corner of my studio who has not changed for the over 49 years. <laughs> I'm still very young. This is during the Reichstag time, you know, almost 20 years ago. Uh, and that small table, I do small sites works of art, like they're eight and a half by 11 inches, little bigger, and I, they call collages. That is French word, meaning that I glue things. For example, this is preparatory study for the Pondov project. When the left side, I use real cloth, but finer cloth to simulate the fabric of the Pondov. I use twine to simulate the ropes. It's done with pencil, charcoal, wax crayon, and pastel. And of course, the right side, you have the aerial photography of Pondov, actually in the center of Paris, that is Notre Dame, is up there, and reproduction of 16th century drawings of the architect of Pondov, the Marchand de Chasseau, who designed the Pondov the, for the King Henry III. Now, that particular study is in a collection in Belgium. Now, this is another study, the same size for the Gates project. It's done in uh, uh, finer fabrics to simulate the fabric panels. I cut out the board and create the folds. And, and because this study is done in 2003, just two years before the project is realized, we already, we already have real fabric sample of the real cloth we use for the Gates project finally to be realized. And there are a section of Central Park now. When you have the solid, <coughs> solid orange line, 
the gates were so feet apart. But when you have the trees, this little, of course, the, the gates, they are separate because the tree, they are low, that the height of the gate. The large, the, uh, the I, I use a lot of photography, like before I show you. This is a very little study, eight and a half by 11 inches, that photography of organ walls. This is the, the, from the eastern entrance of the project, western entrance of the project, w w east from Salida. When I use photography, I have a friend standing here to give you the scale. I draw with the enamel paint and wax crayon. And often this little study, they are, sketch they are sketches for large, you see this grid, the red line? From there, I can transport that study to the larger piece. This is another section of my studio, not change, it's the same. Uh, I do the drawings here for the rice stack. They are a little sketch for the rice stack here. When you finish, it's looking like that. This is 60, 42 by 65 inches low part and 15 by 65 inches upper part. It's draw medium drawings for the rice stack project, done with pastel, charcoal, wax crayon, lower part. Upper part have a cross section of rice stack building and photograph of Volgan walls from 1970s of the rice Brandenburg Gate in the Reichstag. That uh, study is in a collection in Berlin. This is another larger drawing, 96 inches drawings for the blue umbrellas in Japan. Again, preparatory study on the left side, you have the Ibaraki Valley with 1,340 blue dots positioned in all our umbrellas. And that small village of Jimba, who have about 30 houses, we invaded the village with these 90, 20 feet tall umbrellas, almost like they're two story houses we we'll have around uh, near 100 umbrellas in a small village. Now, the people, the collectors who buy our works, and some of you probably know, they're artists, that how this happened. We're using that industrial building downtown Manhattan, and I bring this original work to our second floor when the collector chose the work, they decided to have the work, they give us money, and they take the work. This is how we have money to uh, build our project. You understand? There are no mystery. Simply the money comes from, uh, from the sale of original works of art. Sometimes the collector, the museum, like to have uh, early works. This is early works, much smaller. It's called Package, Barry Lefkis, which belongs now a National Gallery in Washington, D.C. of 1961. Between 1964, 63, and 67, I did these works from the real street demolition. I recuperate storefront parts, a window, and door, and I built this storefront inside, like inside sculpture in the room. And, and this sculpture, particular from 1964 storefront, is in the Hershey Museum, the Smithsonian Institution of Washington, D.C. This works as they're very much like a precursor of the running fence and valley curtain, this vertical barrier that you cannot see what is behind the glass is obstruction, they are light, there's something happened, but you cannot see what is happened. In this year, or even before, in late 50, uh, age 59 and early 60, I did sculptures with barrels. This is simple barrels where I wrap the barrels with fabric, lacquered fabric here. And these barrels was, st I still own that sculpture. And this type of sculpture is a museum in uh, Europe. Now, this is another sculpture museum in the, uh, Holland, so the Rijksmuseum, Koren Müller uh, and Otterlo, who is the biggest collector of our early works. And, and this uh, sculpture was done in the mid-60s. In 1962, in Paris, we did a second uh, together work, myself and Jean Claude, was called the Iron Curtain. The year before, in 1961, the Berlin Wall was built in Berlin, and this is our poetical uh, response to the Iron Curtain, stacking 100 barrels under Ruvis County and the Les Bank in Paris. In 1966, uh, this is again a piece of 1966 of the barrel stacking horizontally. Now, when stack barrels horizontally, this is sculpture in Museum in Milano, uh, the barrels, they are, this angle is always 60 degree because it's cylindrical object. It can be pencil, cigarette, barrels horizontally. Now, in 19, mid 60, we proposed to build Mastaba, and that for, form is called Mastaba, much older than pyramid. Uh, in between Houston and Galveston, we never get permission and the project go nowhere. And finally, in 1979, we arrived in Abu Dhabi where we proposed to do the Mastaba. This Mastaba will be built exactly by the same way like the mas little Mastaba of, uh, of Milano, 
but of course will be a very large sculpture. That is, the master bar will be, this is the scale model designed in 1971, and that scale model uh, built in 1971, and then the proportion of the master bar project is the, will be 500 feet tall, 410,000 barrels, 1,000 feet on vertical wall, a 750 feet on the slanted wall. And when approach the master bar, and this is this, using that scale model, I have the little card to give you the scope of that project. In 1979, Jean Claude and myself, we arrived in Abu Dhabi. So myself and Jean Claude, very young, presenting the project to the Minister of the Culture of Abu Dhabi on the right side, and the dear photograph of Sheikh Zayed Al Nahayl, the uh, uh, founder of United Arab Emirates, is like uh, George Washington for the Emirati. When they went put together this seven shakedom, here myself and Jean Claude working for the site of the project. The project is to be realized is about inland, one of the most beautiful desert near uh, Oasis of Liva. Here you can see Jean Claude and myself correcting the sand that we like to use with the scale model later. And here presenting the uh, uh, project to, to the, in the library of Abu Dhabi. This is all picture of 1979, 80, 81. And here, we are the site of the project in 1980. In 1999, in museum in Germany, near Dusseldorf, Oberhausen, in the atrium of that museum, we built this temporary installation of 13,000 oil barrels. That structure was 21 feet tall, 70 feet wide, and uh, 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 21 feet in depth. Now, I was telling you that we have project for the Central Park uh, in 1979. By pure coincidence, in 2001, a friend of ours was elected mayor of New York City, Mr. Michael L. Bloomberg. And when Mr. Bloomberg was elected mayor of New York City, we stopped to work on any project. We concentrated all our resources to work and to get permission. And finally, the gate was realized. Vincent and Junita moved from Seattle to New York. They lived for, in New York for three and a half, four years, and we installed 7,503 gates over 23 miles walkway in Central Park. With the gate was 16 feet tall, and they have the uh, 24 different width of gates for six feet wide to 18 feet wide. And for three weeks, for three weeks, 16 days actually, 16 days, the gates stay on the summer days and winter days, and you have a park of Central Park with the gates. After 16 days of, uh, 16 days of uh, exhibition, all the gates material was removed, industrial recycled, and re returned on the, for the, uh, uh, on the project for uh, over the river and the master bar. In, 19, in 2007, Jean-Claude was assisting that we should move the master bar very much. And this is the last time where Jean-Claude and myself, actually Vladimir is there working on the real site of the project. And to locate the site of the project, this is the real site of the project is now, Abu Dhabi is up there, and this is the, the, high, the road, very, it's almost highway, 130 miles arriving in that area where the project will be realized. Working on that project with the scale models, a variety of things. Uh, here, for example, <coughs> the most important part is to, we know the project was engineered by American engineers in the 70s, but we need to advance the project very much. And finally, we can hire professor of different university, and here is the image of Professor Sazaki, Professor Ando from University, Hussein University of Tokyo, discussing that how the project will be built. And Professor Sazaki, gentleman with the glasses there, have this ingenious idea how the project to be built. I will show you the, how he proposed the project to be built. Basically, the master bar is geometric form who have a two identical uh, a trapezoid form, the vertical facet of the master bar, and three rectangular form, two identical on the roof of master bar. He, P Professor Sazaki, proposed to flattening horizontally entire this geometric form. Basically, they will be underground flat. Of course, they're not ground. They're sitting on like a bridge truss, 35 feet steel truss sitting on 100 railroad tracks. In the center, he built this like air control tower, 500 feet air control tower. But because the biggest issue to install these 410,000 things in exact position, and actually the workers will install the barrels, the Rolls-Royce barrels, in the exact position like a Byzantine mosaic, basically in the floor. They will install it 
walking on the ground, installing these barriers. When all that is installed, hydraulically, this tower, that will el 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 elvest, uh, elevated all these forms in four to seven days, and finally, the master will be there. I will show it here, the site, how the project look comparing for the Great Pyramid of Giza. This is the vertical wall of the Mastava, and this is the Pyramid of Giza. Now, the, this is another uh, picture when you see the footprint of the Mastava. You see our little car, this is the site of the project, and now the little car is out there, and this is just a few a year ago, we have this little plaque to uh, give you the sense of the footprint of the Mastava at the sides. And now the next picture, the little car in the height of the Mastaba. Yeah. Now, meanwhile, we also work <laughs> with this little special balloon flying there to show you how the Mastaba went. Now, from there, we are going back to working and over the river. Now, to move the project ahead, we cannot write letter to United States government. We hire a special <laughs> company who cost us one and a half million dollars to produce 2029 page planning and design report how the project will be built. This is <laughs> our application to the federal government. Federal government received that application and they say yes, but all these specialists, traffic engineers, wildlife specialists, they work for you, you pay them. Now we hire another company to investigate that study. That other company produced 1,686 pages, two and a half million dollars to review more how that project was built. And finally, on November, uh, this is our meeting with the great mayor of, of Denver, Hicken Lupre, who was a big supporter of the project today, the governor of Colorado, our team, Vince, Junita, myself, and Jean-Claude discuss, discussing the project. And here, finally, on November 11, uh, 2011, uh, 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 Ken Salazar, the Secretary of Interior, make a record of decision. It's called that the permission for the, for the project. And I remember Department of the Interior tried to do the, their decision in the Department of in Interior buildings. And I say to the Secretary of Interior, no, no, this is our project, should be done in the National Gallery in Washington. You see the professor, uh, the, um, the Rusty Powell, the director of National Gallery there. And that was announced on, on November 7. 2011. And of course, you see another meeting, almost that same, with the ruler representative, the brother of the crown prince, Sheikh Hamdan, who ruling the land when we like to build the project just a year ago in Abu Dhabi. And finally, to see, finish the project, I give you two, uh, three other images of the proposal, proposition. This is a typical situation, collage, much more recent collage, because actually upper part, you have a fabric sample of the project we use, of the real fabric we use, typical and of interruption, we have a, a rock formation. You see how the panels will be inclined because the, the Highway 50 is much higher than the uh, rail, uh, railroad track of Union Pacific. And this is another view from underneath and another Masteba study. Thank you very much. Now we can have the light. Okay. Can have the light, I would appreciate. I talk too fast probably, but uh, I don't understand many things. You ask me, I will answer before, but I like to have the lights in the entire room, not only on me. All the lights, please. Hello, there we go. So please, if you have questions, um, you can make yeah, your way sure. to either one of the mics. Oh, come on. You can't tell me Very there's no shy, questions no, in this no. room. <laughs> there are no questions. I, there, some gentlemen is coming here. Okay, thank you. What do you think of the, the, the size of the fabric? What consists? It's all aesthetics. It's all about aesthetic. You understand? Aesthetic. Yeah, all aesthetics. All the colors. Everything is 
they decided, you know, the fabric, the color of the fabric is not something come right away. You see, the, the study in the beginning is very schematic. The color of the fabric, not only for over the rivers, for the rice stack, for the, for the pond earth, for the umbrellas, is coming to the lay aesthetic approach. In the beginning, it's always schematic, very simple drawings, and little by little, we start to have the crystal vision how the project will look. And at the beginning is simple cloth, I use white cloth, but after that, more and more, we're moving to the knowing the site, to the light and everything, and this is why the, the project of the over the river have this silver colors, which the, basically, you know, this is about part of why we choose that site. Now that site, Arkansas River run east, from west east, basically, and we have the east entrance of the project, 10 miles west from Canyon City, and it, in the morning light, this silver color fabric almost absorb the morning colors, it become almost pinkish. And the middle of the day will be platinum. And the sunset, the west entrance of the project, that fabric became like golden because the, the, this aluminum absorbed. And aluminum is not silver color, it's actually real aluminum. We make that uh, thousand, million, million dots of aluminum. They pulverize the special system to the fiber. And that is not silver paint, it's real aluminum. Okay, I have the gentleman there. I will come give you one last one. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, dominating this university, there are three amazingly picturesque slabs of rock, extremely uh, impressive. Yeah. Why not dress them? <laughs> Now, I can tell you how they are. They, excuse me, I have not finished. Okay, okay. Uh, they are slabs of rock which could be dressed with a stuff, I mean, a cloth, <laughs> which would be 20% um, of it in its height would be flat, and the rest, 80% uh, of it would be bands. C cut bands. Okay, this, you already like try to do your work of art. <laughs> like <laughs> you uh, to as, you as wide as this screen, it, it would be, and they would be floating yeah, with the wind yeah. of <laughs> boulder. New work of art. Yeah. And yeah. they would have a sound which could be actually uh, recorded. <laughs> it would be a fantastic sight. You have a right to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hello? Uh, no, it's not working. Uh, okay. Two uh, one, no, no, man, everybody should too. Yeah. Okay, now it's working? Hello? No, uh, it's not working. Hang, hang from. Yeah, yeah but I like very much the people to listen, to hear the question, please. If no, I need to repeat. Please. Sir. Hello. Uh, no, All right. Whoa. Hold it right here. Okay. Um, my name is Robert Ding. I'm a landscape architecture student at UC Denver, and I actually wrote an article about. You talk too fast. Sorry. Slow. Slow, slow down. down. My bad. Like a, okay. Sorry, I'm nervous. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so I wrote an article about over the river, and I wanted you to have a copy, and also yeah, if you could I sign. I appreciate it very much. Okay. Yeah. If you could sign like two of them for the school, that'd be okay. Yes, and then okay, and then. Real question is, um, so correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong, but you um, conceal um, as you're one of your agents of art, yet when you conceal, you um, reveal something with your art. Um, and what with Over the River are you trying to reveal? Ah, so, you know, each project has its own, own uh, inter uh, interpretation. Mm -hmm. And the interpretation is open and any interpretation legitimate. But all the efforts of Jean-Claude and myself, we do our project, is before everything to be beauty and joy. That is the, the joy is the most important, the beauty is the most important. Everything is about, you know, I should understand, all the work we do, Jean-Claude and myself for 50 years, is totally useless, <laughs> totally irrational. <laughs> the world can live without Valley Curtain, without your influence. Nobody needs this project except myself and Jean-Claude, we need it like an unstoppable urge to do that work. Very much like painter who have the huge white canvas, they have a 
enormous urge to fill the canvas with colors. Why should he respond to that? He needs to put black, yellow there, this, his own decision. And all that project is exactly that. There before everything is all about aesthetic now. What's the visual arts, what is the aesthetic in visual arts? Uh, visual arts do with form, proportion, movement, relation, ta -ta, many, many things. And this is, this is how this works is perceived. For example, one gate is not the work of art. Two gates is not the work of art. 7,503 gates <laughs> and 23 miles walk in Central Park with the leafless branches of the tree, with the skyline of Manhattan, with the people walking into the gates. All that togetherness is the work of art. It's not transportable sculpture. This is why this uh, eight area of fabric panels, they are not the work of art. Togetherness of the highway, the rocks, the railroad tracks, the houses, the bridges, the water, the people, all that together, the light of the morning and the morning, no, no, all that is the work of art. They are not one object, we can move it left and right, etc. And they are all designed, and this is the older part of this project. Of course, some project, uh, they, are, they are an urban place, some project they are a rural, an, uh, rural place, but always our project, they arise when they have a human presence, because we need to have a scale. We need to have a scale, meaning that, to know how wide is the, uh, over the river, we need to have a telephone pole, we need to have a road, we need to have a railroad tracks, we need to have a house to compare how big, because in the wilderness, the scale, there are no comparison of scale. This is why all our projects, they are related to the place where the human live and use, and they are woven in that place. Okay. I'll Hello. Okay. Um, so I have a question with like, um, like the the length of time that you actually have your projects last for. They seem to, I don't know. Like according to how long it takes, they're they're so much shorter. So I wonder if that's just a factor of just like dealing with the um, politics of it all? I know you don't want to answer that. Why is there, why but, there um, two weeks? This is the question. Yes. Okay. Why the <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. You know, the project is designed that exactly to stay two weeks. Actually, this is arbitrary. Jean-Claude was always saying you can stay one week, but we cannot be so egoistic. We give the people a chance that, that on the second weekend to make their mind and go to see the project. The project, they exist in that sublime moment, cannot be calm cannot be pressed, cannot be secure, is that moment can never be repeated. Do you understand? Our project cannot be repeated. We never can build another running fence. We will never surround the islands. That unique moment is like the traveling a new life, like the journey of your life. It will never be the same if something stay in that spectacular, unique moment when everything's together and after that it's gone forever. One of the things that you're famous for is using many, many volunteers in the installation of your work. And I'm wondering if you have a plan for Over the River, and if so, if you could tell us about it. Now, this is some, uh, we explain it to me. We use people who volunteer to work. We don't use volunteer. Everybody is paid. You know why everybody is paid? First to have work compensation insurance. So second, you cannot fire volunteer. <laughs> it, this is why everybody who works on a project is pay, and if it does not work well, is a fire. <laughs> and we look for somebody else. Of course, uh, this is why our organization, our project director, Junita Davenport, and we have a, 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 a website. And uh, of course, over the river, we have, with all projects, we have a professional people prepare the project, the final stage, like the gates, like the running fence, will be done by non-skilled worker who will go to training. Now, our projection is that when the project is done, much of the work will be done by professional construction company workers. But the very last uh, installation of the fabric panel, hooking the fabric panel and furling panel, be done by the non-skilled workers who will do the same things with the running fence, with the gates, and they go to training to learn what they do, and they will work there. It's not picnic. It needs to be work there. And of course, they will remain during the installation of the project, like the uh, 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 keepers and monitors of the project to welcome the public 
and help them removing the project. But all that can be find in our website. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. It seems, uh, it seems as if you get quite a bit of uh, energy or enjoyment from working with different bodies of the public, different communities. Uh, I was wondering how Salida and Canyon City compared with other communities you have worked with. <laughs> you know, they are all unique. You know, this is why we like to do projects. You should you know that all projects get unique image, unique things. We, we're kidding ourselves or fooling ourselves to do another gates. We know how to do gates or anything else. Each of our projects is like an expedition of something we do not know. And it's unique, it's irreplaceable, and it's invigorating, but it cannot be compared because they have their own quality, it cannot be compared to the problems in Paris or the problems in Japan and California with the problems on, of the gates. And this is completely different. They're all different. This is why we like to do this project because that fresh, very different experience. Thank you. The young lady there. Hello. Um, I was wondering how you remain persistent in like these projects over so many years, like how you continue with your patience. Okay. And you can understand, <laughs> this is not, it's not an easy way. In the 50 years, Jean-Claude and myself, we realized 22 projects, but we failed to get permission for 37 projects. Wow. Now, some project was refused once, twice, three times, like the rice stack, but we like to build to get the permission, not the point of twice of the gates. Some project was refused and we don't like to do anymore. You should understand, this project, they only happen because we like to have it happen. If we lost interest, why we should do it? And I can tell you from this 37 project, they have some project, they have a very funny story. In 1975, we like, like to wrap the tallest monument of Christophe Columbus in Barcelona, 1975. It's very tall from Barcelona, Christophe Columbus come here to discover America. And we make drawings, scale models, ta -da -da. we go to, to discussing with the mayor of Barcelona permission, and after a month or two months or three months, the mayor of Barcelona say no. And he was assassinated, but not by us. <laughs> there was the, in the early 80s, there was another mayor, he also say no. He was also assassinated, but not by us. <laughs> now, we are in 1984, we, uh, working in the Pona project in Paris, we received let, a telegram that time from the famous mayor of Barcelona, Pascual de Maragai, who brought Olympic Gates in Barcelona, tell Christo Jean-Claude, come to Barcelona, wrap the monument to Christophe Columbus, and we don't, we don't like to do it anymore. <laughs> we lost interest, why should do it? It's our this is the this project happened because we like to happen, not some president of republic or some big corporate executive. It's our decision. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I realize your projects now are, are very grand and very big. And um, I realize how important you are. I didn't know this. I have something here from my house that survived the flood. And maybe if things... I know what is that. It's the section of the running fence with the yes. hoops. Yeah. So with the grommet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and if, if you signed it, I realize now that I'd have to get escorted out of here because you are so big <laughs> that uh, no. somebody that would kill photograph? me. What is that photograph? You know, I cannot sign that fabric because the fabri that fabric is not the running fence, I tell you. The running fence, the running fence is all together. That is simple of fabric. It's not the running fence. But if you have a photograph of running fence, which photograph is what? Uh, Marin. Marin. Marin County, but uh -huh. there was fence there, there fence? Yes. Okay, but we'll do that later. We'll see, we'll oh, see. We'll okay. okay, okay. Well, I was okay, just, yeah, yeah, uh, well, <laughs> Okay, okay. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, I, have, I wanted to tell oh, you. you have a question. Oh, yes, I do. Okay. I do. I wanted okay. to say that if, um, you know, you're not welcomed in Salida, we would welcome you here because we no, have no, no, many... No, 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 it's not true. We have a great support of Salida, a great support. Right. It's not true. We have a not at all. No, no, no. We have a well, big support. We would welcome you here because we have many more rivers now after <laughs> the flood. <laughs> so. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Hello, yeah. 
Um, I have a sort of a technical question. Uh, did you do tests of uh, rainwater and standing water on the over the river project? Uh, rainwater sitting yeah, on the fabric. And yes, yes, yes. That, that during that la not sitting in fabric, we pour ten thousand gallons of water, and the f water goes through the fabric. It does go through. Yeah, it's got Great. through. Yes, exactly. We know that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I know your uh, projects are uh, time limited and for the reasons that you've explained, but uh, I'm extremely fond of the Maisel Brothers yeah. films. Uh, Crystal's Valley Curtain, yeah. Running Fence, yeah. uh, they're extraordinary. And they do provide another kind of record yes. for your work. Yes. And I'm just wondering if uh, you have plans to uh, have a film, a, docu a document, and a documentary film of Over the River. Okay. Now, all these projects have a very complex recording process. And of course, Albert and David Mezels, I met in 1961 in Paris, and they filmed many, many of our films. David passed away after the Pony of 87, but Albert finished the uh, Gates film, who was filmed since 1979 with Antonio Ferrara, who filmed Mastaba and over the river. Because all, you know, this project, they're temporary, but Jean-Claude and myself, we are very conscious that we need to have a documentation record of this project. During the making of this project, we have a photographer, Vaughan Walls, we have a filmmaker, Albert and David, who was filming all the making of the project, hundreds of hours, not only the final project, meeting, etc. And of course, that is the part of the large documentation exhibition, meaning that each of our projects stay 14 days or 16 days after that is removed, but we collect also components of the project, real steel poles, anchors, hooks, uh, gates, panels, everything, hundreds amount of records, technical data, scale models, etc. And each of our big, large temporary projects have his own documentation exhibition. They're very big exhibition from 300 to 500 items. We own this exhibition. Often we use this exhibition to sensitize new place to do projects. For example, when we're negotiating with parliamentarian in Bonn in Germany for the Reichstag project, the Pond of Documentation Exhibition was in museum in Bonn to explain to politicians how one urban project was realized. When we tried to get permission from Japanese government for the surround, the, from the blue umbrellas, Surrounded Islands Documentation Exhibition was in Japanese museum explaining how the surrounded big project was realized. And of course, this exhibition, we own them. And of course, they have this archive material. And we're not very young. Jean-Claude already, after the gate, started to find a way to have, find home for this exhibition. For example, we succeeded to sell. And now, the Running Fence Documentation Exhibition belongs to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington. They bought all 350 items to become part of Smithsonian Institution. This is the, this is, we need to find home for all these big exhibitions. For example, the Reichstag exhibition probably will stay in Berlin, the Pondorf should stay in France, the islands should stay in Florida, etc. This is all big, very comprehensive records for all our projects. Film, photography, and original drawing and sketches, also the real components of the project, real cables and fabric and pond, etc. Okay? Hello, Crystal. This is not meant to be a criticism. I love your work. I see you as a god of the landscape, changing the landscape into another beauty. But I live here since 1967, and I have become, um, I've become a person very concerned about this environment. I learned a lot from this environment. It's beautiful, but it's also very wild, it's temperamental, it's, it's amazingly dark at times, so dark that we don't know how to help each other because we have lately experienced a horrible flood which the city announced every year since I live here, the 100 year flood, and finally it came. And I learned a lot from where I live. I live next to a ditch water. I learned a lot. I learned a lot from this formation of the earth. And I have a big question. 
if you have to, put, if, put you have to have, put, put, put if you have to have, if you have to drill down, like look the at, holes okay, okay, yeah, okay. into the earth, the I holes, like have if you have to drill the holes yeah, to hold me. your poles into the ground next to the river, that really concerns me. And who is responsible afterwards pulling these rods out? And I have worked in my life with a lot of people and I know that there are people who, are, who have a sense for this earth and for this environment, but there are also people who don't. And are you overlooking these people that they pull the rods out carefully so they don't disturb the bed of the river? Because this is a gentle river, but I don't know if it could turn into a monster. Um, you know, what is the question? My question is, can you, can you tell us how, you, how deep Cabo you drill and, how, and the impact on, this, <laughs> on the soil, on okay. the environment? We have 4,000 pages articulating how the impact will be, please. 4,000 pages, they're available to everybody to go to the website. Oh, okay. 4,000 pages of study. Okay. Yes. I'm curious. Um, really? After the materials are taken down, how is the recycle? Um, and after certain museums have accepted them, what happens with the rest of the all materials. the materials? Yeah, Do you just okay. hand them out no, as no, souvenirs no, no, across no, the no, universe? No, no, no. Okay. This is another. What's happened with the hardware? Now, it's not only fabric. There's steel. And Many, many things, many, many things. No, to give an example, we bought 5,000 tons of steel for the Gates project because there was 15,000 bases for each one. Now, you don't know what's the meaning 5,000 tons. Is it three quarters of the steel of Eiffel Tower? Now, we bought the steel from steel company, but we're typical, we're not foolish, we're discussing with steel company, and the steel company bought back from us the steel and today, all the steel of the gates is used by the Chinese to build skyscrapers. <laughs> you know, you understand, all is simple, very common sense. We're buying very good industrial material, and already before even is exhibited, we find who should buy it back for variety things. Their fabric, who is used for other purposes. For example, in the gates project, this orange uh, saffron color portic, there was done on vinyl, but inside there was the enormous amount of aluminum, all kind of very specially designed by our chief engineer, Vince Davenport, form to secure this post. This aluminum was very valuable, cost millions of dollars. We returned back it with millions, it was melted and reused. You should understand, this is simple, very capitalist thinking. We need to reuse all the valuable material and have some money back. We have no any philosophy of that. <laughs> Is this good? Okay. Um, I was wondering, since the fabric is so heavy, with um, having this fabric over a river, what, is, what are the safety issues with having people go underneath the fabric? What, the fabric is very mm -hmm. heavy fabric, yeah. very specially woven fabric, and of course, mm -hmm. it's designed to support everything with the steel cables and the hooks, and actually, it can walk in the fabric. Actually, one of the most beautiful parts is where we need to install the, the pepper sweet fabric panels and the installation is very tricky because normal rectangular fabric panels will be unfurled from the north, probably from the north bank of the river, when it's the highway 50, the Union uh, Pacific Railroad track to the other side by the winches. But the trapezoid panel, they unfurl separately. After that, the trapezoid panel needs to be reconnected to the main cable. And that artwork will be done by rock climbers who are beautiful. They will literally walk on the fabric and they're hooking the fabric. It's very strong fabric. This is why we do wind tunnel tests. Wind tunnel test is done by specialists who do wind tunnels for the skyscraper, airports. And this is that all the work is done by the special people who design special way to fabricate v more important things. Thank okay. you. Hello. Um, I'm wondering what kind of, if there's any major adjustments you've had to make to your over-the-river design because of environmental impact. Major? 
major, major adjustments you've had to make to your over the river design because of environmental impacts? No, we don't have a, the, to, to see, no, the project was designed to be 5.9 miles. This is the right number? 5.9 miles of panels distributed at eight locations. And you know, this is the work of art. It cannot be cut out, very much you know, cut half of Mona Lisa. Basically, <laughs> that or no, and of course the federal government understand that. We need to have exactly this eight location on where it should be done, etc. Now what we did is a lot of mitigation. Mitigation, like through the, basically through the construction process that we need to work in different times. This is why one of the most consuming is that mitigation, we, we, because we have this mitigation, we need to work, we, we need to have this 28 months, almost 30 months to build the project. Because at the moment that we cannot work, because variety of reason, and this is why is the, this is the, in, uh, in, because you know the project, all our project, they designed for particular season of the year. For example, the Gates project was designed to the winter, to have a leafless tree, because during the summertime, Central Park is like forest, you cannot see anything far away. When the Surrounded Island project was designed for the spring before the hurricane Miami come and the later in the season. When the Over the River project is designed for the summertime because we need to have the going with the, uh, uh, it would take you one and a half hour to drive on the road, but four hours to go inside the project for these 42 miles. Basically, this is the reason that we can do the project. We work with community there to have this consensus, the best thing to have these two weeks of the first two weeks of August and summer. To, have, to arrive on that debt, we need minimum 28 months before with all this mitigation to build a project. Thank you. Yes, sir. Looking at the design of those sails, uh, they look like they would be excellent wind collectors. Yeah. And that brings up two uh, points. One is how much wind can the uh, sculpture stand? Yeah, and that is in the, this 4,000 page <laughs> book, yeah. you can find it. The, I'm not in general, see very well, sir, this is the specialist who do that. There are some numbers, and I don't really can discuss that, but they're all in the environmental impact statement of 4,000 pages. And the other, perhaps more facetious point is, could you turn this into a wind generator to generate power from no, no, this, this device? Is a, this project is only to be work of art. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> Nothing else. This is not for use anything except to be work of art. Pure work of art. Totally useless. Totally useless. <laughs> Good. Hello, yes. Christo. I want to ask the question that the lady asked only because I don't think she's going to be able to read 4,000 pages. She was simply asking, in stretching the cables, are you drilling into rocks? And when you're putting bolts or something in those rocks, are you then going to mitigate that after? Yeah, you it's going to be mitigated. It's exactly, it's exactly. That is in the environmental impact statement. It's that's going to mitigate. That's what she was asking. Yeah. Good. But this is why I tell you, this is why we get the record of decision to build the project. Yes. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. I have a question about I want to understand the sense of scale in staging these projects. So for example, the, the curtains around the island. Surrounded the island, floating fabric. In this fabric. big ballroom, would all the fabric for those islands fit into this ballroom? The, fa the, the fabric attached to the beach, to the boom, is 220 feet. But the fabric's thick, and when you roll it and you fold how it, was installed? how much space do you need to store all the fabric before you install it? Ah, okay, it? how was done the project? Okay, the project was done very beautiful. They have film about that, you should see. Basically, the, there was in, incredible engineering uh, cleverness. Each of these islands was surrounded with many sections of fabric. They were specially folded. Speci this is very beautiful. There was, uh, the first, there was a thousand of marine anchors and the water. Uh, this very long, the biggest section, about the 800 feet long, there was floated in the Biscayne Bay and from attached to the anchors with, and the boom. And from the uh, uh, islands, le like fishermen, the people, the young workers, each island have a team of workers, they opened the fabric, the fabric was floating, special fabric floating in the water, the floating the surface of the water. And each island was done by the 
four or five sections. And after that, the special people was really floating to less these islands together. It became one single piece. This is how the project was done. I mean, the Albert and David Mezel did spectacular film of that to see how this beautiful was done because even the installation was an extremely beautiful thing. Okay, and I have one small funny question. Yes. Who is taking reservations for rafting trips under the river? Uh, <laughs> no, that, uh, I think the rafting company they <laughs> have their own organization for that. Hi, I have uh, three quick questions about yes. your work in Abu Dhabi. Yes. Um, first question is, uh, is it permanent? Yes, it's permanent, I say. That yeah. always was permanent. Yeah, like uh, other sculptures I did. Yeah. And then compared to your more temporal works, uh, what's, why have a, a permanent useless thing? <laughs> to <laughs> no, use your words. <laughs> no, no, but I do a lot of uh, sculpture or drawings. They're permanent. They're many, many permanent, like uh, works of art. And Abu Dhabi is a sculpture, is a work of art separately. When this outdoor installation is completely different so, uh, project, yeah. Okay, and then my last question is, um, can you explain again um, how, how you would kind of, I, I was on, uh, under the impression that it was like four walls that were going to be raised. Can you no, explain? No, okay. The, you know, I was saying that the mastaba is a very archaic form who have a two perpendicular wall and two slanted wall, a trunk at top. Actually, that come from the first urban civilization who was six, 7,000 years ago in a country called Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia, today Iraq. In the front of the, this is the first street existing in our world of humans. In the, in the front of these mud houses, the people built benches, like exactly like that. Flat on the top, two slanted wall, and two vertical wall. And these benches, the people were sitting. These benches was called mastaba. And the area we build the project in the villages, they still have these benches and they call mastaba. That much later come to the Egyptian inside and in the pyramid of the pharaoh. Now, what Professor Sazaki proposed is basically because our big work is to install these 4,410,000 barrels. Each vertical wall have 110,000 barrels with no pattern. When I did that scale model with like a, a impressionist or pointillist painter, I put all the barrels in different range of color. There are 10 different colors and they're in the, in the website you see how many thousand of red and yellow or orange, and we take about two months architectural students to calculate one frontal wall, how much, how the core is going around. Basically, the big work was to position this 410,000 barrels in proper place. If you build the structure, it will be a very consuming job, very not interesting. Professor Zach said, flattening the structure. When it's flattening that geometric form, we have two trapezoids, three rectangular from two identical, the side of the mastaba, in the top part. And basic, and the workers would position the barrels like walking in the floor, like a typical mosaic is made. Of course, we don't walk in the floor, the entire structure is 35 feet or high, like a bridge trust. Steel, enormous steel, who's sitting on hundreds of railroad tracks. In the center, Professor Sazaki built this 10 like air control tower, hydraulical towers, who they attach to that structure. Basically, one that is installed, all that slide simultaneously, and it come up in four to seven days. And it's connecting together. <laughs> of course, this is the beauty part. You can see the entire project flattening on the ground, and after a week, it's up there. <laughs> awesome, thank you. <laughs> So I had a similar question, um, yes. but so I know you said that the mastaba was permanent. And no, I was you talk too fast. Okay. That the mastaba was permanent, and I was wondering mastaba? the mastaba. The mastaba, yes. Uh huh. And what went into your and Jean Claude's decision making to make it permanent and to to put no, a lot of time? I was saying that we did many works of art permanent, like the sculptures before, smaller size, but that was always to be permanent. Okay. Yes. Um, and then my last question was, what did you want to do? What did you always want to be an artist? Or what did you want to uh, do before then? How I became an artist, probably. That is the question. No? Uh, what did you, what did, you, did you always want to be an artist when you okay, were a kid? I, I, again, you know, okay. The, I, first, I owned that to my parents, my mother and my father, so that I, when I was very young, five, six years old, five, six years old, I was drawing all the time. And my mother decided that I should have private lesson of art. After school, little boy, I was going to a real painter with oil paint to study paintings. 
I go to the sculpture, real sculpture, to learn how sculpture is done. I go to architect, to real architect, to do scale models. And since age of five or six, I was moved to become an artist. Now, I studied this in Bulgaria, far away in the country. And that time in Bulgaria, to be artist or architect or painter, you go to St. Ham School. The school is eight years. The first four years, you study everything. You study painting, sculpture, architecture. I, ha I have even two semesters of medicine, dissection of human body, very much like a 19th century art school, and many, many things. After four years, you need to be decided to specialize, to become a sculptor or painter or decorative art. And I escaped from Bulgaria in my fourth year and see that I'm not yet decided what I am. <laughs> my question may be almost a follow-up to what you just yeah. described in your being a student of art. Um, at what point in, in your learning about art did you um, begin to think in such a, a, a large scale? Um, many of us here perhaps have taken drawing classes and sculpture classes, but very few of us imagine art in terms of the size of Central Park or, or uh, 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 wrapping a huge building. So when did those ideas first uh, occur uh, for you? Uh, this uh, pleasure involving of that learning process. You know, I was very interested in architecture. And of, uh, all these projects you can see, they have many, many elements of that. For example, when Rap, Rap Reisag was happened, New York Times do not send uh, art critic first time. The art uh, architectural writer was first time because for the architects, the Reisag was type of, type of architecture. Meaning that all our projects have elements of painting like the Surrounded island is very flat, like the surface of uh, shaped canvas, abstract canvases, when the building umbrella is like a building houses, thousands of houses of this uh, two roof without walls. And the, the elements of this project involve the elements of architecture, painting, sculpture. Actually, the permitting process of the over the river is almost like building highway. And this is why this project have uh, this, uh, um, elements come from the, what they are really. This is why they deal with that space. Now, the real, and this is the explanation, the real painting is flat like that, white canvas, you know. And you put colors, this is the paintings. Where the sculptures is like, like that uh, flak or that bottle, you know. Uh, uh, the sculpture is like that, and this, this, the, uh, the public or the experience, you go around, and that is the space that the, change, uh, sometimes the sculpture is very big, like Alexander Calder, and it can go inside to the shapes. But that is the entire space is designed by the artist. Even today with contemporary art, when make installation in the gallery or museum, the, this is all the space, position of objects, that is the space of the artist, decided by the artist. But there's another space where, where little we're thinking about. The moment you go out of the street, walk of the street, somebody decides the sidewalk. You cross the street, somebody decides the red or green light. Basically, 24 hours around the clock, we funnel to highly reglamented space with jurisdiction, all kinds of, we even do not know, but we are moved to that space. Now, what we do, Jean-Claude and myself, we borrow that space and create gentle disturbance for a few days. Basically, <laughs> by, by borrowing that space, we inherit everything what is inherent to that space to become part of the work of art. We don't invent the politics on the right side, what's on the right side. We don't invent ecology in Biscayne Bay, what's in Biscayne Bay. The work is that we don't inv invent the problem of over the river, what's there. Basically, the work of art absorb all this dimension, and this is why the work develop process who is not common in the normal visual art, but is very common an urban project, so the uh, rural project. And doing all these things, we have a, this completely different perception of the work of art. This is why we like to do this project. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Um, as kayakers, we are real excited about your project. And at this time, we know we do not have to have permits to go down to Arkansas. 
But when your project is there, do you know, is there going to be, uh, uh, do we have to have special permission to go? Uh, no, no. What is the permits? They're not, the this is open. It's open. All these projects, they're a public space. Yes. There's no any permission. So nobody you can knows. drive on the road, and of course, uh, even you personally can put your raft. Yes. Apparently, it's free to put your yes. raft. You not necessarily need to hire raft, right. raft people, company, of course. But I this is this public space. They can, nobody can stop you. So do this is open to everybody. The, this project, you don't pay anything. You go there. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening. Once your projects are up, do you spend any time there watching how people are engaging in them? Listening? Close the closet. Oh, sorry. Me. When your installations are up, do you spend much time watching and listening how people are engaging with them? No. no first thing, <laughs> when this project is there, Jean-Claude Dumas says, we like to be with our baby. She was saying that. Basically, we like to do, to be ourselves with the thing. We don't listen to what the people are saying because we work so much. We try to put, for example, we position these umbrellas in California and Japan. And I remember for these 16 days or 19 days where the project was installed, we like to go to all these places. We position this umbrella and we saying to our friends, we, t we see the friends also in the evening when the thing is dark and cannot see the project. We like to be with ourselves in the project work of art. We cannot possibly know what the people thinking about the project. And this is not our job. This is completely, and every interpretation is legitimate. And I give you, this is the more, most uh, the rewarding part of this project because there are so countless interpretations and they are so unexpected. For example, the Umbrellas project was designed to be work of art in two parts, like a traditional classical painting. Two canvases make one work of art, and it's called diptych. Now, instead to be two canvases, this is two projects simultaneously evolving that time, the two richest country in the world, Japan and the United States. And of course, many things was to compare the similarity difference between Japan, way the people living in America. And many, many things, but one of the most enchanting was that each umbrella, it was like a roof of without uh, the house, of the uh, roof of the house without walls, and the bottom was the specially designed sitting platform that the people can sit picnicking. And this is how the people, the California people, people in the yellow umbrella was doing. They arrived and they were picnicking in, and sitting on the platform and eating their sandwiches over the weekends or the late afternoon. And Japan did the same thing, but we completely forget that the Japan, pe Japanese people removed their shoes and they start to walk barefooted on the platform of the, of the umbrellas because the platform of the umbrella was like, like a floor in the house in Japan. And in Japan, you don't walk with shoes in the house. You walk with barefoot. And this is something we're never thinking about, but this is how the project absorbed in different ways. You seem to be irresistible, and yet 37 projects didn't get uh, yeah. permitted. So could you tell us about the people who are able to resist you? Because <laughs> it's hard for me to imagine them. Uh. And could you tell us about how you respond to those no. curious people, and no, or do you get angry, or do you go forgiving, or do you give no, them no, 19 No, 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 I can tell you, I can tell you. Some project uh, was refused, if we don't like to do, do it anymore. Some project was refused, like the Reichstag, and we tried to do it, and I tell you the story of the Reichstag. You know, this is because he asked me how, we know that there was no way to convince to do the Reichstag. Now, the Reichstag was owned by 80 million Germans because that is the parliament of the nation. Mm. The only way to convince the, the, to have a permission of the Reichstag, that majority of the parliament is for us. And what was necessary? There was countless meeting with the elected uh, deputy, and sometimes deputy don't like to see us, sometimes deputy they like to see us, but they say no. Some like of deputy say, I will vote probably for you, but you should come to my constituency to say why I should vote for you. And we go to the old meetings, children's and schools, and town hall meetings, explaining why the project is work. Now, the project involving, is in, in I tell you, it's a very political project. It's involving the parliament, which is an enormous thing, and the prime minister of Germany, that was the biggest against the project, was called Helmut Kohl, very famous prime minister. The prime minister, uh, the conservative party was running Germany. They have majority. And the prime minister <coughs> ordered that the entire decision 
of the making, making of the Reichstag will be decided on full roll call vote in the parliament mm -hmm. that every politician will be identified how he votes. And of course, we work so hard in the evening, the president of the parliament, who was a big supporter of the project, say we're losing and I was so de mm -hmm. devastated. Uh, the, the government tell us because each time we have this huge debate, 90 minutes debate, you need to make a press conference to say what we do. And they, the press conference was done in the parliament, a special room in the parliament. I tell, no, 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 press conference will be done in the museum vi across the street, vis-a-vis -vis that where I have exhibition of the Ponder and why I was so devastated, I was sure that we're losing. In the auditorium of the museum, we hung two large photographic prints of drawings of over the river to say to the Germans, I don't care anymore about the Reichstag, I go to make the over the river. <laughs> and of course, the debate starts, and Mr. Cole do everything possible to make us defeat. And I remember the principal spe speech of majority party was delivered by very important politician today, on near 20 minutes speech against the wrapping of the Reichstag. Today is the finance minister of Germany, Mr. Schauble. And today, big German newspaper, just a month, a year ago, asked him, Mr. Schauble, if anything in your life he did wrong, he said, yes, when I was against the wrapping of the rice. Right. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes, young lady. I was. Oh my gosh, I'm oh sorry. <laughs> I was wondering if you ever built forts when you were little. Playhouses, forts, when you were small? Playhouses? No, I, I, no, I did, uh, how old are you? Five? Uh, how old are you, five years old? I'm nine. Oh, nine, oh, you, my, I was already drawing and make paintings, you know, at that time. Many drawings, I was drawing all the time. Not, not, not this, uh, I do the scale model, like little houses, but scale model, not many scale models, when you take inch or centimeter, you measure that will be so many higher. And it's very amusing, you should do that. <laughs> to, 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 to recognize the scale, you know, how big is when it's real big, okay? You should do that, it's very amusing. I was wondering, so the, 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 the river and the Mastaba, yeah. these can't be the only two projects that you're no, thinking no, no, of. Right? Look, I'm 78, this is, I, I have no one second to think of anything else. <laughs> there, we have so much people working, they know anything. I have no anything, uh, this project, you know, often you understand this project takes a long time, not because for the permission, we explained over the river was dis, dis, disrupted twice to finish another project long time ago, or the, like the gates, etc. The same thing, must have by now, we need to, alone, I am alone, of course I have my nephew, Vladimir, and Jean-Claude nephew who work uh, with me in, uh, in uh, New York, but in the studio I am alone, everything is done myself. I have only these two projects. If, I, if we have something else, Jean-Claude was always saying, we'll be so excited, we tell you right away. Good evening. A dear uh, friend of mine is an artist in New York City, and he's, uh, he wrapped the Washington Square Arch and other buildings yeah. in New York and other places in uh, Buenos Aires. He uh, told me that for him, art is solving problems. It seems to me that you have done a lot of that. Therefore, in some ways, it uh, seems like your art is not useless, as you said, but solving problems is useful. All this, so I all solve the problem to do my art. <laughs> <laughs> and, and solve problem to do my art. That's exactly, we need to solve problems. So first of all, I'm just curious where I uh, get a badass safari jacket like that. I know, you know, oh, I love, you know, I work, I walk with my office. I have so many pockets, everything, and I like to have everything available. This is why I have this. Serious note, um, you've obviously been a very successful public artist. 
And I'm just curious what word of advice you would give a young emerging artist like myself moving into uh, contemporary art. You know, uh, Jean-Claude and myself, we think that to give advice is almost impossible. We don't jury anything. We are what we are to jury somebody. I, of course, I'm obliged to go to the theory, official jury duty, but I don't know, go to any jury, to anybody. And she tell, she always was much better than me. She was saying, you know, the most important thing is, is uh, uh, to you that you, you, work, you enjoy the work you do. And if you enjoy the work you do, you will do it. The biggest problem is to know what you like to do. That is no way to tell you. It's only you can find what you like to do. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Um, I just wanted to say I saw the gates when I was 13, and I just wanted to thank you for uh, the amazing experience that it was. Thank you. And thank you. OK. OK. The lady here. OK, the young lady here. Good evening. Good evening. I'm wondering what your least and most favorite, um, least and most favorite moments of your career the have been. The most favorite project? Moments, just any moments in your career, your least favorite and your most favorite. That less favorite, most favorite. First, you know, I, we never, uh, we never thinking like that because each of course, of course, each of our project is like our child, and each project is unique experience cannot be compared. Yeah. And this is the why our life is. It actually can see that all our project is like a journey, yeah. cannot be repeat, cannot be. Uh, cannot be even compared, but uh, we love Jean-Claude and myself to return to the site. I remember the last time she was with me in Australia in 19, 2007 after the gates, and we got to this huge coastline with the big surf, the Pacific Ocean, South Pacific Ocean, and huge cliffs. And I remember I dislocated my shoulder and tried to wrap some boulders and all this, and the shark was there. And we were looking that, and Jean-Claude probably were totally nuts to try to wrap that things, but we did it. Basically, we were much younger and all these things, but that is more exciting, this project. This project is something, each of the, our project, and actually today, uh, when we're talking <laughs> with uh, our friends, with my nephew is always, uh, I think, the time of Valley Curtain, 72, the time of Running Curtain, 76. All the, our life is the time of one project, and it's embodying ourselves, and they're so different with no comparison. Okay? Thank you. Chris. Oh, wait, one more question. Okay. Or well, maybe two, and that's it. I just it. want you to know that this little thing helps us think really big, big projects. Thank you. You know what this is? Yes, I know. Okay. That w okay, the lady shows us when we do this project, our monitor, uh, keepers of our project, they have many things. They need to assist the public, but also we cut hundreds of thousands or millions of thousands of fabric samples of the fabric of the project, like the rice sack of Paris or Crown Thailand, and that they give free to the visitors little sample of the fabric. Yeah. That is the sample of the Gates project. Thank you. So, Christo, you had mentioned that each of your projects is like one of your and Jean-Claude's children, so maybe we'll let a child ask the last question before yes, okay, we wrap okay, up okay, here tonight. Okay, okay. Thank you. And a young lady? Oh, very good, okay. My sister was wondering, um, my sister was wondering how old you, how long were you an artist? How long? Yeah. How long? Are you still an artist? <laughs> I hope I I'm would, still yes. an artist. Yeah. <laughs> I would hope okay. so. Are you asking how old, Jean, how how old? I'm 78 Christo? years old. And, and did you know something special about Christo and Jean-Claude? About their birthdays? We are born the same day, the same year, the same moment. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> thank I you. wanted to uh, ask you all to join me in thanking Christo thank you, thank you, thank you. and Janita, Vladimir, thank you, thank you, thank you. and Vince. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.